thank you so much for everyone uh, joining here. Uh, first of all, can anyone please confirm whether you can hear me? My voice is clear. Yes, we can hear. Thank yes, you. we can hear. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. So let me start with the introduction from my side only. Okay. Uh, my name is Ankush Chaudhary and I'm the founder of this uh, Learn Nomad platform. And I have a YouTube channel with my own name, Ankush Chaudhary, where I have 10,000 Oracle DBAs are there all over the world following me on my YouTube channel. And today we are connecting for the RAG database training demo. And as you know that whenever your experiences keep on increasing, your core DBA knowledge is not sufficient to start with the and to switch the career, right? So RAG database training is somewhere, you know, uh, nowadays, whenever you are going for an interview, the people are expecting that you should have a knowledge about RAG database training. So we are going to start this RAG database training from the next week. And this will be again completely real-time database training only. And as you know that our previous feedback and the success stories of the students are really, really good. And apart from this, the best part about this RAG database training is that you are going to get three months of lab access that is completely free of cost. So whenever you are doing practice, I observe that many people are facing the issues uh, related to the laptop configurations. So you don't need to worry about that. Okay. So we have three months of lab access. Now, how this training is going to be really helpful for you because we have a best trainer for the RAG database and that's Anurag is there with me. So Anurag is having a lot of years of experience with the IT industry as well as uh, in the training experience. So if someone asks me who is the base trainer for the Rack database, I don't have a hesitation to say that Anurag is the base trainer. And fortunately, uh, we have a collaboration and that's a really good sign for the people, those who want to start their career in the Rack database as well as in Oracle database technology. So right now we have started with the training on core DBA, which uh, for which I am the trainer. We have Anurag is there for the rack, and again for the Golden Gate, we have Ashish is there. So we have a best people in the market who are the best trainer for their respective technology, and they are the expert of their technologies. Okay. So before I spend much time, I would request uh, Anurag to take the control and more rest of the information he'll provide. Thanks Anura for joining. I'm making you host. You can share your screen and I'll go on mute. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks Angus. Uh, uh, hello all. Uh, good evening, good morning. And uh, let me start with uh, my introduction. So then I will share my uh, slide. Myself, Anurag Misra, and I have uh, two decades of experience in uh, various technologies, uh, especially in the database technologies. So I have done that uh, OCP, OCE, uh, Azure Architect uh, certification, Exadata, Rack, uh, and performance tuning. So I have um, uh, I have specialization in uh, clusterware, Exadata. Uh, OEM and data guard and cell scripting. So uh, I have uh, time to time I'm part of the different uh, forums as a speaker. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm also conducting my own webinars also. So might be you hear uh, my uh, name or uh, somebody is uh, first time hearing my name uh, in a cluster of technologies. So here uh, we are going to cover uh, in this uh, batches, we are going to cover that clusterware and uh, clusterware administration, rack administration and ASM administration. Let me share my slide just a second. And if I... you have some doubts or anything, you can interrupt me. I like uh, interactive session rather than only I'm speaking and everybody is listening. Are you able to see my screen now? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, as I said that I lo love uh, that interactive session rather than only I am speaking. So before starting with the cluster where uh, things and uh, 
the course contains and everything i want that uh, uh, everyone will uh, just speak uh, one or two lines about um, uh, herself or himself regarding that um, that uh, the number of experience you have i do not uh, need to share your uh, company name on all those things it's not uh, necessary only that why you want to join uh, the cluster where courses and what is your expectation then uh, then we'll uh, um, uh, just uh, note it down all those things and we'll try to fulfill your requirement also so it will be good for if that you will share your uh, uh, means that uh, uh, something that uh, why you want uh, to join this courses and what is your expectation what you want to achieve right so if some uh, uh, means that uh, you will start one by one then it will be better for me yeah hi anurag i am ankit here okay hi ankit uh yeah uh, actually uh, yeah hello yeah wait yeah am i audible yeah yeah you are audible yeah uh, hi ankus hi anurag and hi all Uh, i am ankit uh, and uh, i am working as oracle database administrator uh, in one mnc in the, like for one year and like i have basic knowledge on like uh, oracle db core oracle dba whatever concepts on those things but uh, i really want to you know like uh, learn more on i know the basics of rack and data guard and all but i want to dig deep on rack concepts so okay. so that it will be better for my career and it will be helpful to switch to other companies okay good so basically you want to learn that uh, clusterware uh, things and you do not yeah, have yeah. any uh, experiences in the rack technology right yeah i just know the basic things on rack what is rack and all but uh, like you know, you know that, i just uh, want to get uh, sorry to yeah no yeah that. installation and all i don't have much idea i don't have yeah. i have worked on rack i know the nodes and all but i don't know the installation process and all nothing yeah so which version you have uh, worked uh, previously because uh, uh, that uh, this technology are um, time time to time is changing and uh, is adding new new things in a uh, different different things in a uh, newer version so you have worked in which uh, version Uh, 11g 12c uh, somebody uh, actually yeah like uh, in our uh, uh, like in our project uh, there are all like uh, there standalone database like 11g and uh, 12c 19c is also there so recently mm-hmm. like you can see 19c i have worked okay okay thanks ankit uh, yeah so okay next Hi Anurag, uh, myself Logesh. Uh, so I have uh, around ten plus years of experience in database administration. So now I I I would like I am not so much confident with Rack concepts, uh, but I am working with Rack databases. But still, um, not uh, I have uh, only sixty seventy percent of uh, confidence with Rack. So I just want to learn more on the concepts and things. So that's what I've joined here. okay so uh, look is that uh, what type of uh, works in your office is like uh, you are uh, doing this uh, upgrade and all patching and all what type of works uh, that uh, is uh, generally you have seen that in your environment that you are covering the daily basis or that uh, task that you are uh, means that uh, performing um i am doing everything here but still uh, yeah, um if some performance issues or something is coming up and some cluster services are going down then i am really pretty uh, not so much confident with the troubleshooting thing so that's mm, that's the main thing which i am looking here yeah but uh, the, the, there is a two things uh, if you are talking about the performance tuning part so performance tuning either is a standalone databases or is a rack databases that is the different things and um, um, we are covering that uh, in uh, our cluster where courses that performance tuning part also but that is only related to the weight event that is occurred in the cluster where right but if you are looking for that uh, we will uh, uh, guide you with uh, all tuning expect like um, uh, means that uh, how that we we'll read that awr reports how we can analyze those issues how these things and that things if your expectation is in that direction so might be you need to join that performance tuning courses and you require to connect with ankus on that part 
but in our in uh, our courses will uh, go through with the course contents also will cover that uh, the, the weight event that is occurred in the uh, rack environment frequently and what is the reason for that we are not covering that awr report and all those details here right but yeah uh, if that in, in the discussion and that uh, session if you want that we can uh, just uh, discuss basic things also we will discuss it no problem on that but uh, if you are expecting that we will go deeply on the performance tuning part we are not going on uh, that direction in this uh, in this uh, models right okay no, not a problem yeah i understand no problem on that okay okay thanks lokesh next okay. I think everybody wants that uh, in a silent mode. <laughs> so just uh, one or two lines that your expectation. That's it. Nah, nothing else. Uh, you do not require to tell, say your, your company name. I, I, I don't I want to share your experience is also. Yeah. I, Go ahead. I am, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, Sumit. You are audible. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Good evening. Uh, this is Sumit from uh, Bangladesh. And... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, with Oracle, actually, I have some work experience with Oracle only for the application part, like uh, Primavera uh, database maintenance and all these things. Apart from that, we have some Petrodeck applications like OpenWorks. Those are actually Slumberger things. So uh, I have some basic experience with Oracle database administration. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. last year we have uh, migrated uh, our Oracle database things to SQL as our company is very much focused to Microsoft. So we are not using Oracle anymore, but this is on my personal interest. Uh, uh, I want to know more about, my expectation is to know more about uh, Oracle, uh, Rack, and all these things. Okay, so I believe that you have good knowledge in uh, Oracle core DB part. And it's not the prerequisite of these courses also. If you have no uh, that uh, means that database uh, things like SGA, PGA, uh, yeah, I, I know that. all of these things. I know uh, that those installation part and the basic architecture part, cloning and all these things. Uh, yeah. But I would like to learn more uh, starting from, again, because as I mentioned that this is not related to company specific. This is the personal, uh, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, interest yeah, only. Yeah. yeah, it's good also that if you learn those technologies, because if you switch your company, one company to different company, so uh, you, you definitely, uh, these things will be help you uh, to uh, get a good jo job and good practices also. So because yeah. Oracle is, uh, I think, covering more than 50% uh, or 60% uh, market also in database mm -hmm. part. So yeah, yeah. Uh, skipping Oracle will uh, not help uh, you any um, anywhere or uh, if that uh, you are uh, in future, you are, if you're learning extra data also. So in extra data also, uh, yeah, we required that Oracle uh, cluster where only because in um, Excel data we have a cluster environment only. And there is a yeah, you can create the standalone databases, but uh, you do not have that standalone grid there in Excel. Okay. okay. Yeah. So in the future, also if you are learning Excel data, you require to learn that cluster where, and cluster where okay. is also very much helpful in the cloud technology also. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you. Okay, next. And kindly, um, uh, Mr. Uh, stop your uh, this one uh, videos. Uh, somebody is like uh, Vivo one seven one four. Your video is showing. So can you stop it? Anurag, you can remove him. Let me stop the videos. I just stop the videos. Okay. Uh, um, uh, next. Uh, hey, hi, Anurag. Hi, Ankush. Uh, Abhirub, this side. Uh, hope you all are doing good. Uh, can you please confirm am I audible to you both? Yeah, yeah. Abhirub, uh, very much. Okay, yeah. Uh, so I'm having uh, overall five years experience as an Oracle DBA. 
um, and uh, don't having any hands-on experience on React and Clusterwork. So I saw Ankush uh, videos in YouTube. So that looks very interesting. So that's why I joined this session to gain some knowledge in React and Clusterwork. Okay. Uh, so you have a uh, miss you are currently working uh, as a core DBA. Yeah, Oracle DBA, five year experience. Okay. So it's good that uh, you can learn this uh, Oracle cluster. Yes, yes, and yes. And I'm looking forward into it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, hi, sir. Good evening. Hi. Yeah, uh, I have four plus years of experience as Oracle Apps DBA. To enhance my skills, I want to learn the Rack Data Rack technology also. And uh, that is the main reason I'm going for this training. Okay. Yeah, because everywhere, uh, if you go or like the current company you are working in, they have rag databases, so I think as uh, as far as I think we should know rag in depth. We should have in depth knowledge of rag also because everything is on databases. So we should know like what is all, what is the process, how it works. And we have a good clarity on the thing which on which we are working. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, correct. Uh, correct. Uh, I think that you are changing uh, jobs also, or you are uh, moving from one project to different project for different client. Definitely, you uh, rec uh, you will uh, see in those environment that clusterware and rack environment. So, as a DBA also, once uh, we have that uh, more than the two or three years ex experiences, uh, definitely we require to learn the clusterware and things also. Even that uh, in these days, that um, uh, in uh, after Mr. Once that you are joining or uh, Fraser also joining any company, they are asking for the clusterware knowledge because uh, that uh, once we'll uh, explore these things, then you understand that why we require clusterware and how that why the companies are using this clusterware things uh, rather than only standalone things, right? Because that we have that performance improvement, we have a high ability solutions. So if that one server is down, then we have that other solutions. So multiple things, and in a in a in a this maximum ability architecture. Once you learn those things, you'll understand that we have that rack environment, we have the data guard environment, we have some other environments to make it these things uh, more reliable, and that uh, will secure our uh, uh environment or databases also so we'll see those things those things also in that uh once we are exploring that our sessions right yeah yes sir. absolutely yeah thanks for anybody else will uh i, I don't want to force uh, everybody if you interested to tell you something then, then it's okay otherwise we'll start with that our agenda and we'll proceed further on that part. so anybody interested to share something or want to uh, add something, then it's okay. Yeah, hi, Anwar. Hi, Ankush. Yeah. This is Sona. Uh, am I audible to you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I have told five years and seven months of experience as an Oracle administrator at uh, DBA. I have worked on standalone databases and currently I'm working as an Oracle application administrator. EBS and but the main issue I'm facing right now that most of the like application is going for high ability services like a real application cluster. So uh, in our environment also one of the channel and database is moving to real moving to a rack environment. I have the knowledge. No, we don't have any rack environment. First of all, we are going for the iteration regarding the rack. So that's why I hope this course will help me to learn rack. I have the knowledge what is rack how it works but uh, i don't have the like installation experience and in-depth knowledge of how cluster work how uh, like the asm work regarding the storage of the files and difference between file system and asm so that's why i joined this course uh, so anybody uh, having knowledge in a golden gate 
that uh, or anybody knows that acfs or heard about that acfs if that you are knowing golden gate or... i i have experience in golden gate like migrating a database oracle databases but i haven't used with uh, some other third party applications i haven't used it okay acfs you are going to work with the golden no gate, right? i haven't okay okay good because um, uh, as i said that uh, the technology is moving very uh, uh, fastly and uh, every time they are introducing the new new things and in, uh, integrating with the other things also and is uh, making that environment a more secure and more accessible to user in a um, uh, that uh, uh, basis and also that environment is secured also so they are implementing multiple di different different technologies and things so we'll, uh, once that will uh, go with our stage we'll explore all this oh, oh yes. anybody else will want to say something or we can move uh, about this other okay let me start with this uh, this things so first thing uh, that uh, everybody uh, know that what is the standalone system and what is the clusterware right everybody know that uh, what is um, once we are saying that standalone and once we are saying that a clusterware anybody uh, know that i am not talking about oracle only i am talking about that uh, servers or uh, any technologies so once we are saying standalone so what is meaning of that standalone means so standalone means that uh, we have one single server and we have um, implemented all those things like either databases or application on that server only right or once we are saying that uh, that once we are forming the clusterware clusterware means that we have the uh, similar type of configuration uh, and uh, that not only one system but multiple system forms one cluster and on the top of the cluster we are putting our applications so advantage uh, is that uh, we require once that one server is hit that uh, application or databases is available and uh, um, because one uh, only one server uh, is down right now and is uh, the application and database is accessible right so uh, the uh, and is also uh, that uh, previously in a standalone we have only one server so that uh, uh, the processing things and everything is uh, load or that everything is uh, processing will done on the only one server but once we have that cluster where environment we have multiple uh, servers and um, uh, doing this uh, means that pro, uh, and its uh, work is distributed on all those servers so the processing speed is also faster and we have that also high ability things that uh, if, if one uh, server is not available or then uh, we do not have any impact on the running businesses you know that the business <laughs> in part the banking <laughs> So you know that that uh, the banking environment and other uh, environment is very very much very very critical environment. So if that we have five minutes or ten minutes downtime also, they they lose they lose might be um, uh, that they lose that uh, high amount also. That's why that uh, every client want that their system is available in twenty four by seven and it's a uh, all three sixty five days, right? So uh, and that's why you see that in your, your environment also that you have that SLA for the tickets and all, right? Because that some environment is very very critical, so they are paying high amount for that, and those environment is like is a high SLA, and that uh, you require to resolve the issues uh, um, as soon as possible. That's why we have that uh, uh, save one, save two, or uh, or the critical tickets also, right? so that's why this uh, means that uh, we means that uh, uh, we require to use that clusterware to uh, not only that uh, a secure environment but also that will um, have that uh, uh, means that uh, will uh, multiple system will process that uh, request client request quickly so if that only single system is there is uh, is not uh, we will not uh, utilize that all those Um, is that um, if that we have multiple CPUs involved or multiple servers involved, that definitely the work um, workload is distributed. And how the workload is distributed, how we will discuss uh, later in this session only. 
that uh, how these things will work uh, is working and how the, the, the cluster where is uh, working and distributing the load of the multiple servers. So that uh, basic idea here is that you will just understand that what is the cluster where. So let me move uh, further on the, the slides and we'll see that this part also. So here, what is the cluster where? So uh, as I said that the cluster where is a group, a group of independent uh, computers that that is forming one cluster where. So here you see that every computer having own CPUs, uh, memories, and everything, and they are forming uh, one one uh, uh, means that we are putting all those uh, system in one cluster, right? And who is uh, uh, doing these things? Who which application is forming as a cluster? Cluster is called clusterware, right? So, um, so here is the um, the independent system. Every system having own uh, C CPUs, uh, mem uh, memories, and uh, operating system. And uh, we are putting one uh, software. That software is uh, um, uh, called clusterware. That uh, so clusterware is forming cluster. So we are um, just uh, joining all those system as a single unit. Right, that is called the cluster. And in the top of that cluster, we are putting our databases. So how we are putting these things, uh, we'll see that later. So in a cluster, where two things is very, very important. One is how this, uh, that the networking is connected between the shared storage and the uh, systems and how these things are uh, connected to the, uh, or how that uh, this cluster where and things are accessible to the client, right? So how they are able to access it, that is very, is, uh, is um, uh, very much important here. So two things is important. One is a networking part here in a clusterware, and one is a shared storage part. How the share uh, means that every system is access this shared storage, right? So how these things are working. So we'll see the, um, this part in the, uh, uh, once that we are exploring that uh, all those uh, sessions. So we'll see that in uh, those things also. So anybody done that uh, the um, uh, cluster where deployment or uh, installation um, or uh, have you part of that team also that uh, senior people are doing this uh, cluster where installation now? Uh, anybody else having that uh, that knowledge? No. So installing last week only, but uh, uh, I'm facing the lot of issues. Okay, so you are installing on the uh, VMs or uh, physical machines? Yes, sir, VM. VM and uh, um, uh, so uh, and the storage you are use, uh, using that uh, that uh, um, is that NAS or uh, or ISCC things or how um, is that uh, what what is your configuration? Have you? Yes, sir, ISCC. ISCC. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Good. So how will uh, we will start? So we will start uh, because uh, once you join that one, uh, you will get that uh, uh, three uh, machines, and the, those machines are available twenty four by seven to you, and uh, you are able to uh, practice uh, those things. And that uh, the, the, those machines are provided uh, on uh, real servers, so you will get that all those access. And uh, anytime you can, um, because I know that uh, the we are DBAs, so most of the time that uh, we are not uh, going in the same shift. Uh, sometimes it's a uh, changing every time. So it's uh, sometimes we are in a morning shift, sometimes we are in the uh, day shift, sometimes in the uh, night shift also. So uh, that that's why that system is available twenty four by seven. And uh, whenever you get the time, you practice it on those servers. So we'll start first. We'll start with the basic things that how you can install that rack uh, clusterware things on uh, your laptop right so if you have 16 gb uh, ram available in uh, your laptop or desktop you can easily install that cluster so we'll first we'll start with the basic things and that uh, i want that uh, you will mo more familiar with those uh, installation and these things then you will you uh, mean that you you feel more confident once we will uh, go through, uh, through with that uh, different sessions so we'll start with a basic to advanced level, 
So here we are, um, we are providing the training basic uh, to advanced level. So we'll start with that installation first and how you can install the things on the, your laptop uh, or desktop. Um, and then we'll proceed with that. Why I'm saying these things? Because um, uh, in a real environment, we are using that uh, DNS servers. We are using that uh, these things, ISPCs and all. But initially, once that will move uh, or start with those things, might be you will uh, feel confused on that part. So that's why we'll start with that uh, basic things. So uh, instead of DNS, we'll use some uh, different things on our laptop and desktop. And from uh, uh, ISCC, we'll use that uh, um, our uh, shared storage things. And we'll use that uh, ASM lib initially. And later on, we'll, um, um, we'll uh, see that how that ASM filter driver will is working. Anybody know that ASM lib or ASM filter driver or uh, any idea on that part? Because few few terms that I'm using, I know that uh, um, uh, means many people are not knowing those things, but uh, don't worry on that part. We'll see uh, later and we'll explain all those things also. Right? So let me move uh, further on this. So you understand that what is the cluster, right? I do not go through uh, that uh, how these things are connected and how interconnect, but it's, it's not required right now. We'll sure. explore uh, later. Only I just um, uh, uh, say here that the, the group of independent system is uh, why I'm uh, putting this word a group of independent system. Every system having own uh, CPUs and memories and all those uh, forming one uh, with the single system that is called cluster. And who is uh, uh, who is making this, um, uh, putting this uh, uh, independent system as a single unit? That is called clusterware, right? So clusterware is a software that is uh, combining all those independent system in a single system, right? So whenever that we get that uh, user request or client request, that will be distributed to the different systems. I will see that how this load balancing and these things are dynamically distributed to different system. What is the role of the services here? So we'll see the, those parts also and how these things will be working. And uh, later on, we'll see, explore that more that what is LBA. So load balancing advisor, what is that? Uh, and how the things is uh, distributed to the different system. And uh, what is the criteria and how that Oracle cluster where you understand that Oh, this system is free. We require to put all the load to divert those load to this new system or that other nodes. So those things will explore it because most of the time, uh, interviewer is also asking the person uh, if that you, uh, you if you having that more than seven or eight years of experience, and when you are going to uh, means that uh, once you are giving any interviews, then they definitely they will ask that how that. Uh, uh, load balancing or scan is working in the cluster. So uh, if that you will search those things also in the net, you will not get one um, uh, good answer is always confusing. So we'll try to clear all those doubts also. And, and our training is like uh, we are uh, um, uh, Mr. Tar, um, uh, Mr. Tar, I, I'm not personally very much interested to only so then because this is the demo session first session that's why i'm showing uh, some slides to you but uh, i'm not preferred to showing that all those uh, slides and things yes the concept we are discussing but uh, those things we are discussing on our notepad and uh, these things and where is required to uh, prepare the slide we are preparing the slides also but i am uh, very much uh, uh, interested I, I want that uh, interactive or practical oriented training so whatever the things we are discussing, we want to show you on the live systems. So we'll, uh, we'll all those things we are covering on the live system. Even that we are doing a great patching and uh, on the different methods also, I try to cover all those things uh, in the live environment. We do not have any scripted things that we I will just read and uh, know. I, uh, I like dynamic things. We'll do that all those things. Even that uh, we are covering that uh, later uh, section that uh, voting days, OCR, backup recovery part, Corruption part, we we'll want to show all those things live. We corrupted those things. We'll see that what type of error we are getting, how we can recover that cluster where if something goes happen in your environment in future, or if you are facing any issue, then you have that better idea to understand that 
how these things are working. So I do not like that scripted things rather than doing all those things uh, on the live uh, sessions itself. Okay. So, uh, so everybody understand that what is the cluster, right? Let me move further on this part. So what is the cluster where? So uh, as I said, that cluster is a software that provides various interface that is forming the cluster. So what type of things that are typically uh, can, is like um, you have that uh, means that you are dis distributing your lo uh, loads on the different nodes, and uh, and uh, the cluster where also allows to manage your whole. Like uh, you can manage all those adding node, uh, uh, removing nodes, all those things you do, uh, all those things uh, via clusterware software. So it is um, it is also kept that all those uh, means. Uh, that all those logs and all those uh, those things also you can check the different logs also to know that uh, what was happened uh, during this uh, uh, node crash or something right so cluster where is a, a basically is provide that uh, the, those all those facilities to um, to uh, create one cluster so the and uh, uh, this cluster where is Means that Oracle um, clusterware is uh, because we are using Oracle databases, Oracle technology that is called Oracle clusterware. So Oracle clusterware is also same. Is a uh, is a uh, cluster means is a uh, uh, Oracle clusterware is known as Oracle Grid infrastructure uh, software. So Oracle Grid infrastructure um, is form the cluster. So uh, during that clusterware uh, installation deployment time. First, we require to uh, Oracle Grid infrastructure. First, we require the system, the node, uh, where that uh, the OS is installed uh, previously, and then we'll try uh, will form the cluster using Oracle Grid infrastructure software. So, you know, Oracle Grid infrastructure software we can install either is a standalone or cluster way. So, standalone. Why we are installing the standalone grid? What is the purpose of this installing the standalone grid? The purpose of standalone grid is to to use that ASM. If that you want to use the ASM, um, automatic storage management ASM, volume manager of Oracle. If you want to use that on um, ASM, then you require to install Oracle Grid infrastructure as a standalone for the standalone system. For grid for the cluster where we are installing Oracle Grid infrastructure and we are using the ASM features. What in ASM and details? We'll see that later. Uh, if I'm uh, I'm going uh, with good speed or I'm uh, or is required that little bit slow. Everybody uh, on same page or? Uh... Yes, yeah, sir. We are going good. Okay. So here that uh, uh, and uh, is a real application cluster rack and cluster where is same or different? Anybody having any idea on that? Is the cluster where when we are saying the Oracle cluster where and when we are saying that Oracle rack both are same or different? Both are same only, I think, sir. Same? Yeah, in general term, that uh, once we are saying that Oracle cluster where and when we are saying Oracle rack, both are same. But uh, once that you see that is a uh, rack means Oracle real application clusters. Means that uh, the, uh, that uh, on the cluster where we are putting our application, either is a database or is any application that is called that our uh, rack environment. But uh, the software who is uh, providing this uh, facility to integrate means that combine all those uh, uh, independent system as a single unit that is in, uh, that, that is performed by Oracle clusterware, and in Oracle is called Oracle Grid infrastructure. So Oracle clusterware and rack is almost same. But uh, um, uh, but the only difference is that uh, once we form the cluster, then we are putting this uh, rack. So when we are uh, so why we are mentioning in our course contains uh, cluster administration and rack administration and ASM administration because uh, um, all three are different things. Cluster where we are, where we are uh, we are able to see that how this uh, cluster where is stuffs like node addition, node deletion, all those stuffs. In a rack uh, administrator, we'll see that the all rack databases related things, how that uh, rack one node, uh, Oracle uh, rack one node, how that um, means that uh, the databases node we are adding and deleting, 
and all those related uh, rag databases related stuffs that is covered in the oracle rag databases uh, rag administration and asm administration uh, administration we are covering that uh, oracle asm volume manager where we will see that all those um, asm disk group and all those things acfas uh, so all those things we have covered in the ASM administration. So all three, once you will uh, cover that all three combined things, then you are able to export in that, uh, the, uh, that this technology. It's very, very easy, but once you understand the concept and things. And uh, that's why we have the practical approach, because it's not, uh, because if that you want to purchase that uh, laptop with high configuration, 16 GB or something, uh, so it's very, very costly. That's why we have uh, decided to provide three months lab to free of cost to every participant to just practice all those th uh, things and you will go uh, uh, with uh, the class flow. So when, when, uh, once I have covered those things, you will just refer those videos and also um, perform in your lab environment. And that everybody having own uh, uh, lab setups and uh, systems, so you will practice by phone also. And somebody wants that, no, I want in a form in a group, then you will perform in a group. Uh, means that will al allocate a two person also uh, for one lab. So it depends on you. But we are uh, providing the individual system to everybody. So uh, that uh, goal of clusterware that uh, make that uh, easy installation to integrate all those system and form one cluster, easy management uh, after installation. If suppose I want to remove one node, or I want to add one node, that all those things is um, uh, you can perform through the Oracle cluster based software. Uh, con con continuing the tight integration with the Oracle rack. Yes, rack databases are on top of this uh, this thing. So you have that uh, integrity with the uh, integration with the rack databases also. ASM enhancement. Yes, ASM we have that uh, different enhancement, ACFAs and different things. Uh, so we'll explore it also. So no additional cluster were required. So in previous, if somebody know that is a 9i or 9i that we are using Veritas volume manager. So how, uh, how we are installing the cluster where there in that um, uh, uh, 9i uh, setup or so if that we have that two physical machine and uh, linux servers then we first we require on os level we are forming that using veritas volume manager to form one cluster on os level and then top of that we are installing that 9i uh, rack and all so it's a very uh, tough job but, but once that um, 10g was uh, released that time so Oracle is, um, is just uh, uh, provided all those features to the Oracle cluster where software itself. So we do not require that third party um, things or volume manager is introduced ASM also. Uh, so, uh, so then we are using that uh, ASM and uh, installing that, uh, deploying that uh, rack setup. Uh, from 10G onwards and 11G, we have that many, many good enhancement. So we have that, that is called a, um, a GPNP. So that uh, node addition, node deletion, all those things is very easier in 11G uh, uh, release two. And from 12C onwards, we have that a flex cluster. So flex cluster, flex ASM are introduced in 12C. So here in uh, this course, we are covering from 12C to 21C. So we'll cover 12C, we have covered 19C, we'll cover 21C also. So we'll, we'll cover all those features, we'll uh, discuss all those things, we'll even that we'll see that uh, Flex cluster is not part of 19C and all. So we'll uh, see that in once we'll, uh, we'll install that 12C and we'll see that the, how the Flex cluster things are working. Anybody know that or what is the Flex cluster or Flex ASM? Flex ASM, anybody know that? What is Flex ASM? What, what is the Flex cluster? No? No, sir. Okay. Okay, we'll discuss. So here, um, any oh. question? Yeah. What is node eviction? Node uh, eviction. Yes, node eviction means like one node is uh, uh, rebooted or restarted the cluster where things. And why it was so um, most of the time, Client is uh, very much interested to know that RCA for that. And is uh, 
frankly speaking sometimes is very easy to understand that the node you will reason and all but sometimes is we require to see multiple logs and things and then we'll uh, will conclude it uh, that the uh, why the node was uh, evicted right so it is for the multiple reason either you have that uh, cpu utilization is very high either your um, uh, that network having some issues or that uh, um, is that uh, that's the um, mistake that we require to um, check all those logs and then we'll conclude it, the rc most uh, most of the time as a dba we require to provide the rc for the node that is called node reboot also and um, now that um, we have that uh, uh, previously that uh, once that uh, we have any issues on those things that the uh, node is generally restarted now that uh, without a reboot uh, list that we um, uh, the clusterware is providing that uh, solution to you know, just restart that clusterware software itself so it's not that a node is rebooted rather than uh, restarting that clusterware software itself so we'll uh, we'll see that part also because that that troubleshooting part is very very important so that's why we are um, we are taking that uh, troubleshooting uh, <coughs> three and four classes complete session with the scenarios and with all those logs and thing uh, we are exploring on the live servers and we'll see that uh, why these things are happening right then we'll uh, conclude thank you okay. so let me show you the course contents we have every i think everybody know that course contents right let me show you is visible to everybody right yes okay so here that um, here is mentioned that we will start with that uh, i have not mentioned with that uh, uh, practical or live session approach but uh, yes we will start with the clusterware installation how that uh, will install the clusterware we will start with the 19c and we'll see that how you can install the clusterware on your laptop or desktop first and uh, before that we'll uh, again we'll discuss more about the networking concept in clusterware we'll discuss about the clusterware itself we'll discuss about the shared disk uh, concept and all so we are using that uh, virtual box to, uh, to perform this type of installation but we um, you can use that vmware also and uh, later section will show that on the physical servers also how you can install it. then uh, <coughs> then we'll cover that all those clusterware architecture that um, <coughs> we'll cover in the details and uh, later on we'll uh, discuss about the startup sequence once your linux or the server is started how that clusterware software is started and which process is started first and um, uh, and all those things we'll discuss in the startup sequence then we'll uh, we'll also discuss about the uh, voting disk con consideration so we we'll discuss about voting disk we we'll discuss about the gpnp profile we we'll discuss about uh, ocr olr all those things we are discuss about so all you will see that oracle local registry is there from 11g release 2 when, when, when uh, we are, um, when we had uh, oracle was introduced introduced that G, uh, means uh, uh, plug and play uh, from 11g release 2 we'll see that all those concept and things then we have the cluster configuration option then we'll see that a standalone on cluster what is the difference between standalone uh, grid and clusterware we'll see with a uh, live demos we'll see that a standalone installation we'll see clusterware uh, we'll see then those things again and then we'll uh, see that oracle flex cluster what is oracle flex cluster we'll discuss uh, uh, these things so flex cluster and flex system both are uh, different so flex asm is not required flex cluster but flex cluster is required flex asm so flex asm is not flex asm uh, we can use in standard uh, means a standard cluster also but flex cluster is required flex asm without flex asm flex cluster is not possible then we'll see that in a domain service cluster will in a domain service cluster we have a uh, two uh, type of members one is database uh, that is called member cluster of, for database and one is called member cluster of application so we'll see that with a uh, installation also these things we'll explore and it's a very very interesting things to install these things and show you that how these things are working 
then we have that uh, uh, that these are the pre-installation tasks that is the grid infrastructure pre-installation uh, tasks. Uh, what is the required for these things? How that uh, GNS DNS uh, uh, <coughs> is there? So we'll require to see these things. We understand that concept here is mentioned that uh, the concept also. Uh, so for the flag cluster installation part, when we are doing the flag cluster, we'll use 12C. That time we require to use the GNS. Without GNS, we are not able to install the flag cluster. So GNS is mandatory for the flag cluster. We'll see that part. We'll see that public, private, and VIPs. In 18C onward, we have that VIP lace cluster also, right? We do not require the VIP um, uh, in that uh, in previously we have required public, private, and VIPs for each node. We required uh, the set of IPs for public, uh, private, and VIPs, but 18C onward or 19C that we do not have, uh, uh, we can also use that VIP less installation. But what, why we required VIP and now we are saying that we do not require VIPs. So is any performance impact? And so once you understand that a scan, the, how the client is requesting uh, 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 that any request and how the Oracle cluster where is handling the request, then you will understand that uh, that uh, this is the VIPs concept also. You see that previously in the client side, once we are putting the TNS entries, so there is a one uh, section is um, is like a means that we are putting multiple server entry for one TNS name also, right? That is called load balancing. Load underscore balancing equals to yes. We are putting. If somebody remember that, otherwise I will uh, show you those uh, TNS entries also. So you see that in your environment also, you see that previously, uh, but now that we are not putting, we are only using scan name. So only single name to connecting your cluster where. So, uh, so if that I draw the diagram, let me explain you a little bit. If that I use that term, I, so, so let me draw that. If suppose that we have two servers, Two nodes, okay. We have two nodes, and uh, how this uh, uh, and we have one shared storage, okay. So how that um, uh, connection and things are working here, and here that we have that client system. So we have the client. Client either might be any application like a uh, uh, EBS. Civil application or any third party application or any you are connected with SQL developers, so all are put in the client part. So this is the client. Okay. And we have that one. Uh, everybody know that uh, the switches, router switches, any, uh, anybody having any idea on switches? So once that we require to connect multiple servers that uh, we are required the switches to connect it, right? So here in the cluster environment, we require one public switches and one private switches. Okay. So is a public switches. So uh, from every server, uh, we required one public connection with the public switches. Okay. So here we have the different IPs and here we have another connection with this one. This one private switches and is connected with the storage. So the storage is direct, is not directly connected with the public network, right? And this switches that client is connected. Okay. So how the network flow is, you understand that here that uh, all those customer and client, the customer is client is sending request via this one. And then is diverted, the load is diverted to the different system, right? Is that, uh, so how these things are working? So previously we have, um, TNS entries for so suppose this uh, uh, node one. Suppose this one is a node one. Suppose it's node one, and this one is node two. Okay, this one is node one, node two, and this one is your shared storage or ASM, is your disk group and disk card here. 
is coming from either from uh, sandboxes or storage boxes or um, uh, uh, or NAS devices, right? So uh, we have that storage boxes also. We'll explore that part also. And iSCSI also, we are. Uh, I'm able to show you in that our session that how these things are working. So it's a ASN or shared storage. Okay. And these are the, this one is a private switches and this one is a public switches. Okay. And this one is a client. So previously that, uh, if that you see that the entry in the TNS, uh, I'm talking about 11, before 11G release two or uh, So uh, you see that the entry in TNS name in that uh, client side, TNS um, names.org. Everybody know that TNS names.org, right? As a core DBA, you know that, right? Okay. Okay. So in a TNS names .ora, you will see that the two type of entries. One is called first. You see that the load balance. Something I do not remember exact parameter, but I will uh, tell you. But load balance equals to yes. This load balance equals to yes means um, so node one entries is there and node two entries there. So if uh, means that uh, through TNS on client side, we are doing the load balancing. So that uh, once that uh, they are requesting, one time is going to node one and one time is going to node two, right? So here that we are balancing the load on the client side, right? But now that once that scan is released, scan means single name. So here problem is that once that uh, if any reason, we'll just uh, want to upgrade this node one, and we have removed the node one and added here node three. Suppose we have added node three here. So again, we require to all client side, we require to change the TNS names.ora. So it's very difficult job because once you see that in a Sybil application or EBS application, you will see that um, uh, there is a multiple screen is there. So everywhere is required to connect with the database. So you require to change that in a multi places for one single application to changing the TNS names dot over means removing one server and adding one server. That is very tedious job, right? So that's why the Oracle is introduced one single client access name to uh, means that we have uh, only single name that is uh, scan, and we can uh, we can connect uh, we can connect uh, through scan. And we have only one uh, name, so it's, suppose that is scan dot whatever that your company uh, domain and all. So we have that one scan name. So through this one, we have connected. So the problem, the thing is that so these things will manage here. So if that one once we added the node one or no, we deleted the node one, added the node three, node four. So we do not require to change this address, right? So it is always, um, so we do not require to do any changes on the application side and the load balancing and stuff we are managing here. So how, once that connection is coming, so here we, uh, we will manage it with a LBA, load balancing advisor is there. Through that we can manage it and we'll connect to the node one, node two, node three, anyone. And uh, this will be help once you explore more on that part, you'll see that there is a services and how we can configure the services and all, and um, the how services is very much important. You see that part also, right? So this is the concept behind this one, and we'll explore more on the ones we are uh, uh, just, uh, covering that scan and all. So in the services we have three and four session because services is very very important. So we are covering more depth in the services with the example. So if that uh, some connection is established and in between this node is failed, so how these things will be transferred to another node or is that all those transactions and things are lost, we'll see that those things with the live example. Okay, so, so now, now that here, um, uh, that scan is uh, playing big role and scan is uh, then <coughs> trying, transferring this load to the lo uh, local listener. Yeah, and anybody know that a local listener and um, a scan listener or uh, hear about local listener in a cluster where
Dono, sir. Okay, so uh, Lister, everybody knows that, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so listener, uh, that uh, listener uh, you are using uh, means that if you are uh, want to connect with uh, your database, uh, we want to are, yeah. So you are connecting to the listener, and listener is hand over the connection to the uh, database, and that uh, establish the connection between the client and the database, right? So. So um, a local listener in a, um, in a uh, grid infrastructure environment, in a, um, a rack environment, the local listener is running through that uh, grid infrastructure software, home, grid infrastructure home. But if that you are running this, uh, this thing from Oracle home, um, uh, it's, also, it's uh, also possible, we can run it. What is the you know, advantage of running from grid infrastructure home, how that uh, <coughs> this, uh, I mean, listener registration or database service registration done with the listener. So we'll explore that part also. If that we are running from the Oracle home, I means individual home, then uh, different listener for different databases or different port. So what is advantage and what is disadvantage of that part? So here that uh, good thing is that you will uh, you will understand that um, uh, that you require to understand the network concept more. Uh, related to cluster where environment and said if that you have uh, understand this concept that cluster where is very very easy then we have that uh, installation part as we discuss it and we'll also go through with our flex and cluster installation things and we'll uh, install that flex cluster also and then we'll see that the managing the cluster where nodes that how how that adding node deleting node uh, all those things are working and all, then we'll later on we'll install that uh, rack databases software and then we'll create the two node rack database environment and we'll see that rack one node databases so that rack one node databases is also very very interesting things we'll see that how how these things are <laughs> working and how uh, why uh, oracle is introduced that rack one node databases then we'll see that cluster management things then we'll see that the cluster management uh, logs and all that different type of uh, TF uh, um, is there, the different type of tools is there, what is the role of o OS Watcher, if that you are using Exadata, then what is the role of Exa Watcher and all. So we'll see that all those things we are exploring here. Then we'll see that the Oracle OCR, we'll see that uh, OLR, we'll see that uh, voting disk, we'll see that uh, scan listener. Uh, GPNP profile, all those things we are checking with because uh, three, four component, components are very, very important in clusterware. So we'll see that part. Then later on, we'll see that the policy-based cluster management. Um, right now that uh, we have three uh, nodes, then um, uh, as a um, clusterware admin, we decide that how those services and which databases running on which server. But we can create the policy based things also and we'll put that uh, create that uh, container type of stuff and we'll put all those servers there and uh, we'll um, allow cluster where itself to manage the resources to running on which servers that is called policy based cluster also so most of the time once you see that um, uh, your database is uh, most of the time is admin managed but we can also use that policy manage also so we'll see that concept also then we have that upgrading and patching. That's upgrading and patching we are doing with a multiple ways and multiple things also we discuss is which, uh, which one is better for you, why, and which one is uh, in a uh, in, um, 19C, um, I think 19.8, Oracle is provided that uh, zero downtime, uh, uh, zero downtime database patching also for clusterware. So most of the time that a cluster where that we, if we are doing the patching on that node that every risk means that everything like a databases and everything we are moving to the another node and then we are doing the patching. But 19.8 onwards on same server or same node we are doing the patching, but even the databases, uh, all those databases running on that server will not 
shut down on that server and um, and even that is not relocated to another server rather than we'll move from uh, 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 upgrade from one or pass that uh, home uh, on grid home from one version to another version in 19.8 um, onwards so we'll see that the, there is a zero uh, downtime for the databases also on that node also so we'll, we'll see that part also and we'll see that the switch grid home we will see that um, what is the switch grid home we'll see that uh, you know, dry run upgrade so in upgrade part we'll see that the dry run upgrade also so so these things also we are covered and also we will we'll discuss more about that o patch auto anybody using that o patch auto this uh, means that anybody having any idea uh, what is o patch o, o patch auto because in a standalone system generally we are using o patch right we are not using o patch auto right so anybody any idea on that o, o patch auto and my personal experience is that in rack environment use that o patch auto is very very interesting things you um, uh, because um, uh, we promote that uh, um, um, automation or uh, very less work for the db also so here that once you run the o patch auto so o patch auto itself will manage all those things is shut down the cluster where is moving that all those things is done that all those patching also even that in a one shot you can pass that cluster where software uh, as well as a multiple oracle homes also using o patch auto so we'll explore it is very very interesting very very interesting topic this one and we'll see that all those things with uh, on a live environment so we'll uh, we'll see those part also so and then we have a mon uh, monitoring and troubleshooting oracle cluster where we'll see that uh, that uh, the troubleshooting part also that is very very important we'll see that uh mgmt db databases uh, that how this uh, cluster resources activities log uh rebootless node eviction we'll see that that part also is very very interesting in these days we'll see that uh, um, uh, these things also we'll explore it we'll see that tfa here we'll uh, we'll see that if that possible then we'll see we'll add that uh, rack databases on oem also and we'll see that how this uh, monitoring part and performance part is, we can do, uh, we'll check it on OEM also for rack databases. Okay, and then in the rack administration, we are covering that, um, uh, that all those uh, rack, uh, first we'll see that the rack database is overview on architecture. We'll see that um, in a rack environment, how that, uh, Parallel execution will like you have uh, running one query, then how is uh, things are distributed on multiple nodes. So parallel execution with a rack, we'll see that part also is very, very interesting uh, concept wise also. But, and then we'll see that the, with the um, uh, installing, we'll see that Oracle rack software, uh, Oracle database software, uh, that different type of background processes related to racks uh, databases. You know that you have um, a different background uh, processor for the standalone databases so in a rack that there is a new some new processes are there so we'll explore that part also then we'll see that the read log files and uh, this one undo and temp um, what is the concept on the that rack environment that how the read log files and undo uh, temp table space is working so <clears throat> also we'll see that the patching part upgrading and patching for oracle rack o patch uh, we'll see that. So O patch will uh, in O patch auto will cover that uh, uh, Oracle home also. But if that you want to see that you know um, O patch also you want to use for the Oracle home, we can see in this part O patch. Then we'll see that the backup man uh, recovery for rack databases. How we can uh, speed up the things on the multiple nodes uh, for the backup part. And we'll see that the media recovery part in our rack. Uh, all those things we are covering here. So configuring the Armin and performing parallel backups on uh, multiple nodes, we'll see that part is very important. Then we have the global resource management concept. Uh, so uh, this one is that uh, how these things are like a cache fusion will happening on that, how that the blocks are transferring between that um, two nodes using interconnects. We'll see that through the cache fusion. 
So do not worry about this terminology and things that once we start it, uh, you feel like it's very, very easy. Then we have the mounting and tuning part. We'll discuss about uh, rack weight events and all those things. Then you'll see that AWR snap, how we can take that AWR snapshot in a rack environment, how we can generate the AD and AWR report for the rack databases. Then we have that um, services part that is very, very important. We are covering three, four classes uh, services on the live environment, how that uh, services are working, how that uh, if that um, uh, some transaction is going on and suddenly the server is uh, restarted, then uh, what is happening to those stories is that uh, things are lost and all those things about how that uh, uh, fan and all those things are working. The fan events, the uh, TAF, these things are working. So we'll see this in a and now that we have that application continuity concept, AC concepts. So we have that, we'll see that how these things are configured on the application side to understand that the rack connection, uh, application connection with the databases. Then we have the rack one node databases. We have um, how we can relocate uh, that you see that the load high on that server, you want to relocate your rack one node databases to another server. Online, you can relocate it. So we'll see that uh, how these things will uh, work here. Then we have that uh, because in a 21C onwards, we do not have that, uh, um, uh, uh, miss that uh, we do not have that uh, uh, non-CDBs environment. So we have the CDBs environment also. So it's very, very important to understand that the um, multi-tenant and uh, CDBs uh, for rack uh, architecture also. So here we are exploring all those things in depth. Then we have quality of service management. We'll see that uh, how QS management policy and things are working in the rack environment. Then we have that ASM administration. In ASM, we will covering that all those ASM component, components. We have the background processes. We cover about the ASM instances. We have uh, node listener we're covering that, that is called local listener. That we will we'll see that um, in Flex ASM, we have that see that additional listener also for Flex ASM. We'll see that part also. Then we have the disk group management. We'll see that the ASM disk group and that all those compatible attributes, parameter, load by rebalancing. If that disk is failed and we are adding new disk, we are covering here. Then we have uh, covering that uh, Flex ASM disk group. And we are, we are covering that ASM files, directory, templates, ACFS, all those things we are covering here also. In ACFS replication, I have not mentioned, but if the time permits and if have, everybody is interested, we'll cover that ACFS replication. So anybody wants to say something or uh, any additional thing that uh, we have not put it here and uh, you want to add it here, then we'll add it. Uh, hello. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Uh, yeah uh, Anurag, I have one question. Uh, yes. As you tell us about the future of the vehicle, uh, which you are going to teach us in the course. The mm -hmm. my question is that on which version you will explain the feature of the this rack? 9, 8, 10, 11, 12. Uh, we are covering from 12C to 12C to 21C. We are covering 12C. We are covering 19C. We are covering 21C. So all the feature, all the feature like in the course, like cluster configuration, cluster or like a cluster architecture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how we are what starting? Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you that how we are starting. 19C, first we are starting with the 19C uh, installation part. In the first part, uh, during the installation, we are starting with the 19C. Okay. Then uh, once we are uh, touching this uh, flag cluster and all, so flag cluster is part of 12C. So we are starting the 12C installation, right? And once we install the flag cluster and all, or once we install the 12C cluster where, then we'll start with the upgrade part of 12C to 19C. Right. And later on, we'll update from 19C to 21C. So whatever the new features is uh, introduced in 12C, we'll discussing all those things. What are the additions? What are the things are removed from the 19C? We'll discuss in that all those new features. And we have that uh, slides to discuss all those things in details also. In a 12C, uh, yeah. So we are exploring. It means that uh, once that uh, course is finished, you will, uh, um, uh, you, you will familiar with the all three versions. 12C to 21C. Because things okay. are same. 
only that things are additional things are there right so in, in 12c installation you will not see that domain service cluster installation part mm -hmm. but in 19 mm -hmm. you will see that so uh, in, in a 12c you will not see that uh, that how to uh, means that uh, mgmt db database is mandatory there during installation but 19c is not there and means 19c is optional you can either without mgmt db database also you can install the cluster there. so we are discussing all those things it's not you you feel like uh, it's a different different things it's not like that they are only okay. that adding those things and uh, and uh, we are discussing this in multiple times every session we are saying that uh, 12c we have this part uh, these things is not there and we are explaining then you have better idea once that you finish that courses you have better idea that you can differentiate and you will give that uh, the 12c whatever things are there and uh, whatever things is added in 19c and how that in 21c uh, what are the things they have introduced means we will, we will start from the 12c <laughs> yeah but uh, initial installation will start with the 19c because most of the uh, the uh, clients have moved to the 19c right but 12c also we are we are starting with during the upgrade part we'll uh, install the 12c cluster and we'll uh, upgrade to 19c and then we'll upgrade to 21c but yeah features why we'll discuss all those things in our class also and one more question suppose a person yeah. who don't who do, don't have any idea about the rack is it okay for him to learn from yeah, the 12c yeah. yeah yeah uh, because that uh, you, uh, you know, for uh, joining this course only you you uh, you require to know that uh, uh, little bit code uh, db knowledge like you know that sea pga um, how to add the data file no no i'm i'm database. just talking about the rack not the database i'm just talking about the rack this who is the person who have any uh, idea about the rack no so no no, no. Okay? once that uh, you will join this courses na you will uh, you will feel that uh, will uh, from basic to advanced level we are doing. we are not uh, doing that um, uh, only that uh, uh, is that covering the advanced things no it's a basic to advanced so you do not have any knowledge do not worry on that part we'll start with the installers basic installers and things and uh, my last question is uh, like uh, you uh, you are saying like uh, after completing the course we can access the lab for the three months no 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 and the course uh, itself is uh, uh, covered in three months okay uh, so every weekend we are covering in initial and later on it is required that uh, uh, we required to cover in uh, three days or four days per week we'll uh, see the later but initially we'll start with a um, um, uh, weekends uh, two two hours okay so it's, uh, that uh, currently we are uh, planned for the three months uh, mm -hmm. for this courses and um, uh, so three months the lab is free you will uh, and the access the your lab 24 by 7 you will able to do all those your uh, practice and all Okay, uh, one more question. Uh, like after completing the course, was uh, if I have some problem, you have some question regarding the rack. So, is it possible for me to yeah. call to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. after completing let the me, course, let, can... let me uh, tell you about that thing also. I uh, forget to tell those things also. First okay. thing, once you join these courses, it's a uh -huh. lifetime access. Lifetime access means if that in um, after this one we are starting with another batches. Right, mm -hmm. you are free to join the live sessions. No, okay. no problem, no charges for that. Even that a whole life you can join it. If that okay. we are after four, five years also, we are covering that uh, twenty five C or twenty three C. You mm -hmm. can join there also. No problem on that because uh, it's like one time um, enrollment and lifetime access. And your videos is also that your class videos is accessible to your lifetime. You can use it. Yeah. Later on, suppose that after three months, somebody required that. Okay, I I required one more lab, one more yes, month sir. lab, mm -hmm. right? So it's possible. But that time we'll see that if that we are starting with the new batches and that mm -hmm. the number of participants and the number of machines we have is not fully utilized. If it's fully utilized, then we'll say okay. that just wait for uh, um, uh, two weeks or three weeks. We'll uh, manage uh, uh, the lab for you. Because uh, in a um, uh, node addition, node deletion, when that, that part is completed, uh, might be we'll release one one system. So we have only two system um, uh, for three months, right? Because uh, mm -hmm. that uh, node addition, node deletion part is required. The third node. After that, uh, if that will remove one one node, mm -hmm. and if that we do not have any pressure or any um, uh, means that something that uh, request for the other participant, so the three uh, three nodes is available, but 
uh, once that uh, you added node a uh, deleted node that part uh, then you have only required two nodes for uh, practices or upgrade and all those things so if that will release one one uh, instances or one one uh, system so we have that other participant also is waiting for lab will allow also so after three months also if the lab is available will give you and will charge nominal but uh, that is not fixed uh, if that is required or is a genuine case that you, do, you require the lab because of some reason will uh, definitely yes, not charge for that and will allow free of cost and uh, one more question like in fourth point grid infrastructure pre installation task uh, regarding mm -hmm. the gns and dns uh, as i know like uh, uh, both bo installation on both the features like gns and dns are separate Will you explain both the installation to us or only the one like DNS and GNS are no, no, separate no. features? This one is a general concept, domain mm -hmm. naming services, either in a Windows environment or in a Windows domain also that DNS is used. So what is the purpose? Because how the internet is working, once we type the NS lookup and once you type that one IP addresses, so how is written that uh, the Google uh, name on there? So one uh, one domain is there where that all those uh, names uh, against the IP addresses is registered. That is called DNS, right? In in a, uh, in a uh, GNS is a grid naming services that is used for the Oracle purposes. And uh, once that we are using the Flex cluster and things, so how the the leaf node is communicating with the or which uh, how is connected is going via GNS only. So in GNS, so whatever the nodes are, uh, so it's registered, the uh, grid naming services register those names as um, same as DNS, right? It's registered the name. No, but my question is that the, the installation steps for both the, fe uh, both the features are separate, different, not the same. Yeah. Yeah. Can you explain uh, both yeah. the installation steps uh, practically or not? Yeah, yeah, both we are uh, doing practically because DNS will start with the, uh, this installation. Okay. basic installation which will start with the dns and but on the laptop desktop we do not have the dns server right so mm -hmm. in the for dns we are use some um, uh, different things to configure as a dns so is a uh, cluster where you understand that this is your dns and it's coming from dns but actually dns server we don't have so we'll see that so first we'll start with the dns and later on we'll cover that gns both we are covering Okay, thanks, Sunurak. Yeah, thanks. Anyone else any Yeah, yeah, thanks. Hi, Anurag. Abhish here. Yeah. Uh, I think, Anurag, uh, most of us are all working here. So, mm -hmm. I'm joining this uh, course uh, since this is weekend course. And mm -hmm. you mentioned uh, that uh, if uh, at later stage, you may conduct classes uh, three days or four days in a week. Say you have 24 7, how will manage the class? Because my shift will be 24 7 then. Yeah, actually, that uh, this course is uh, on, uh, on weekend only, right? So we are covering on uh, Saturday, yes. Sunday only, two, two hours. But not uh, yes. right now or not any plan for the adding additional classes. But it depends on that everybody is agree to additional classes that if you want, then we'll add it. Otherwise, we have that uh, two days uh, weekends only, Saturday, Sunday only. We do not have any plan to um, on uh, uh, this, uh, Monday to Friday. So we are not doing in a week, weekdays, right? We are on weekends only. So we are not, uh, but in, a, in, in future, suppose that uh, after two months or uh, that you want that additional session also, or you want you have some different agenda also that we want to upgrade in a, uh, this way that way uh, and this thing and we want additional things then definitely we'll uh, discuss with everyone if everyone is there then we'll uh, additional uh, classes but uh, initial classes is only on weekends right and those recording is always available is sometimes uh, we know that as a dba we have the difference which so we um, 100 percent attendance is not possible right so that's why we are providing the recording also. So recording is available. Uh, you can... I agree recording will be there. I agree recording will be there, but uh, you cannot compare recording and uh, live interaction live with you yeah. with, the, with the same thing. Yeah. So if that um, um, everybody is don't want, then we'll only weekends. So initially we'll start with the only weekends, no weekdays. 
because weekdays also I'm um, very much busy, so I do not have time also. So uh, we'll we'll just cover up on uh, weekend only. So if that is additional thing is required, we can <coughs> extend that hours also, two hours too, three hours on uh, weekends only, right? No problem on that, right? Okay. And what will what will be the timings? Uh, timing, uh, we'll uh, we'll see with uh, Ankus also, but uh, I prefer this time also, seven nine uh, seven p.m. to nine p.m. I do not have any problem. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, anybody else having any questions, or uh, we can conclude here? Or... Yeah, Anurag, uh, like this installation and all, whatever things we can uh, do in the lab, right? We don't uh, like uh, need to install anything in our personal computer. No, 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 no. We do not require. You just require to connect with the server and you can perform all these things. And those, those servers is yours. So whatever things you want, whatever the experiment you want to do there, you can do. And yeah. if you face any problem that uh, uh, we'll discuss it and we'll connect it one-to-one uh, -one also in the classes also and we'll fix your issues also. Then you understand okay. better understand that uh, uh, what uh, you have done wrong, that's why it's not uh, moving. Okay. So, if you have any query that you can with Ankus also, and uh, we'll see that uh, we are starting from 12th of December. So, uh, so you will connect with Ankus on that part. Yeah. Uh, so, another uh, we'll we'll try to keep that. Uh, you tell me like your timing 7 to 9 is that okay or 8 to 10 yeah, yeah. 7 to 9 is okay if everybody uh, i do not have any problem 7 to 9 8 to 10 but okay uh, no, no i prefer that 7 to 9 because i know that uh we'll have right right, person, right so we have uh, some um 20 30 minutes extended also so right, right. Training, uh, that is a very late for me also and in the morning where i require to join offices also i completely understand yeah we'll try to keep it on seven to nine we'll see like how uh, the progress is going on so guys yeah. like if you have any question queries anything this is the right platform where you can ask the question and i hope uh, everyone enjoyed the demo session also and uh, again uh, let me tell you one thing that uh, see we have a base trainer here okay who, who is having two decades of experience and that's not a small experience and as you see in the initial part only he has touched to all the technologies uh, uh, related to the oracle right exadata and performance and so end-to-end -end knowledge you are going to get and again like uh, related to the fees uh, we are not charging much uh, so let me <coughs> talk about the fee structure and everything uh, Anurag, uh, can i share my screen is that fine yeah yeah yeah, yeah. let me stop it Give me a minute, guys. I'm just sharing my screen. So can we keep the timings for morning? Is it possible? Oh, morning is not possible for me. So, Uh, let me share my screen so if you want to know about the syllabus you can go to my website okay and then go to the training and there is a rack abs syllabus okay uh, so okay, whatever your, uh, your video is on we are seeing you but you're not able to see your screen oh i'm sorry i'm sorry 
Now, can you guys see my screen? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. So uh, you can go to my website, guys. Uh, this is my website. And if you just scroll it down, there is a training is there, Rack DBA courses. Whatever Anurag said, uh, all the things are over here. Okay. And again, uh, uh, everything is mentioned here. You will get the recordings. And Anurag is already having a lot of years of experience with the IT industry. And the best part about this training is that you are going to get three months of free lab access. So if you don't have a laptop, still, you know, you can do the practice on the uh, lab things. Another thing is like we are also doing the same installation on your personal laptop also. Apart from this, whenever you have any type of questions, queries, anything, again, you can reach out to us. And uh, apart from this, as you saw that these sessions are going to be really interactive. So it's not like we are just going ahead and covering the things. So things are going to be really practical. All right. And whatever things which we have experienced in our daily routine as a Oracle DBA, all the troubleshooting steps and everything that we are going to cover up with these training sessions. Okay. Now let me talk about the uh, fees and everything. Okay. So for this rack training, especially for this batch we are trying to make this fees is 14999 rupees indian rupees okay and those who are uh, coming from the different countries especially not coming from india for them the same amount but it will be in usd dollar okay so whatever come i guess it will come around some 200 dollar okay just we'll do we'll do this uh the timing uh, as anurag said we'll be taking it on on saturday and sunday only and the timing will be from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Okay. So this is the timing that we are following. Since it is a Saturday, Sunday, uh, I hope most of the people will be free and they can have, uh, um, you know, interactive sessions over there. And again, live sessions are always play an important role. Apart from this, you are getting recordings also. And one thing which even I was not sure, but just Anurag said that, you can repeat the batch anytime and i believe no one will give such type of you know uh, because again let's see right now you're working you're taking a training from 12c to 19c or 12c to 821c actually okay very soon new versions of your oracle database is going to be introduced and for that also you don't need to pay any extra for the same okay so obviously you know this is going to be a plus and bonus point for everyone okay so this is all about the training guys and fees compared to the market and again it is 50 plus hours of duration which is around it will go around three months and we are going to cover each and everything okay so i don't think so anything is much needed over here apart from this like if you have any questions queries anything okay and you are interested to join this training you can reach out to me on my email id let me put it here only so you can reach out to me on my email id which is ankush.thabali at the red gmail.com or you can reach out to me on my mobile number or whatsapp directly on the same number i have my whatsapp number it is double nine six zero two six two nine double five you can save it if you want so we'll take some limited uh, student let's see okay we already got already got few admissions parallelly i was taking the admission also so okay if you want and you want to start your career with the rack database training and along with us definitely you can reach out to us okay let me know like if you have any question anything you want to discuss here before we end up with this today's session uh yeah because when the training will start uh, on 12th, 12th of, right 12th, 12th yes next week okay so like uh what is the last date of to register the registration is already started so we'll see like if we almost four ambition i got it <laughs> parallelly only okay so as soon as you do it that is always good i'll tell you one more thing you know uh okay i uh, which is new thing you know even we are trying it for the first time see when you are joining the batch you know i'll tell you this thing like 
by any chance okay by any chance okay i'm just going to the negative factor after joining this class after taking the two classes okay whenever okay after joining and you are taking two classes whenever you think that you are not interested for this training and you don't like it i am giving you the negative okay which is not going to happen and because you take my word i am with this dv industry from so many years and you know we were able right that is why you people have joined before two class or third class when we start before the third class if you think that you want you change your mind and you want your money back give me a message you'll get your 100% refund this is what we have we have confidence on us 100% refund but the condition is before the third class if you third class means immediately like when you are joining saturday and sunday before monday call give me a call okay give me a call and take your 100% refund i know this is never going to happen that is why we have confidence on us okay this is not only for it rag you know anurag is best <laughs> i should not say this when he is available here but i'll tell you uh, in front of everyone okay he is best so the best part is right now he is with us so take the advantage of it and start with the training and you just saw that everything right so any apart from this anything else guys any small question anything no ankush i think uh, you covered uh, you and ankush anurag covered almost everything right. thanks for that okay guys anurag uh, can we close here can we stop here yeah yeah ankush uh, thanks all uh, to joining that pay how much sir yeah thanks ankush thanks thanks anurag thank you so much bye bye guys thank you bye. thanks